Alright, so here's two parts of the last video. Again, I'm going to be walking during this whole thing, so if you want to avoid dizziness, just do something else while you're watching this video or don't stare directly at it or something. Um, and as the first part, I'm literally, literally, this is, I'm putting out the second part about, uh, like, 14, 15, 16 minutes after the last one. Well, I'm recording it anyways, after that one. Um, I'm still piecing this series theory together, literally, as I'm talking to you about it. Um, so far I have enough for two parts. Um, now, um, I'm going to, I suppose, theoretically explain, and again, you know, I'm not some theoretical quantum physicist. I don't know all the laws of the universe or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm probably going to be extremely inconsistent, but it's just a concept, and I can't guarantee it's right or wrong, because it's probably wrong, you know, probably talking out of my ass. Um, but I figured, you know, I should put it out there for authenticity, see if anyone can use it, you know, for something someday. Um, but, there's yet a second part, um, there's a second way we consider we might actually, our existence might end. And that's what we call the Big Freeze. Um, and perhaps that is what, uh, that is, that is supposedly, could theoretically be a result from the uh, infinitesimal uh, sphere of um, infant, infinite expansion, uh, that's what I'll call it, I guess. Um, from the la first part of this theory. Um, well, see, perhaps when matter does transverse uh, a dimension and then perhaps comes back or is simply gone, there will be gaps. Now, th there's two actually two explanations inside of this one for how it could appear as if the uh, universe is expanding via uh, gaps. It's more of an illusion in this case. Um, so, it's like this. If it is being sucked into a wormhole, then there will be gaps in that because, as I said, it's no longer in our dimension. It's outside of our uh, plane of contact, so to speak. But not only that, Say it reappears. Well, when it when the, when it goes into that wormhole, it, it may or may not lose speed. I don't know the whole physics on that, but it doesn't lose absolute speed. So say, however, I don't know how it comes back. So I don't believe velocity is, you know, completely lost should it be traveling through dimensions or time or whatever it would be doing in this case. So when it comes back, it, it, it say it comes back somewhere, like say it threads through another dimension that is parallel to the plane of our universe, and I'm super talking out of my ass right now. I don't know what I'm talking about. So if you can help me film the gaps or disprove me, I would appreciate that. Um, I don't want to be right if I'm not right. That's as simple as that. Um, but, um, so, say it travels and then it reaches farther out in the universe. Or anywhere at all. Maybe even right back in the same place where it began some time later. Well, there's two things to factor in here. <clears throat> the three things to factor in here. Um, one... As matter travels through one dimension to the other, there will be a physical space of which is empty. And as it comes back, well, perhaps the way it comes back, it doesn't lose velocity or perhaps it gains velocity on its way back. Thereby making it appear, and perhaps in a way it is expanding but not due to naturally just moving on its own. Perhaps it's more of a extra velocity kick. You know, it's two things going on at once. A, a matter is being pulled out of space, and B, matter is being returned to space 
at a different position, possibly at a higher speed. Therefore, the circle does expand, not in, not in uh, density, but perhaps in volume. So perhaps the stars, perhaps the circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's more like loosening threads than anything else. Now the big freeze, it would still be possible. Because, well, yes, the matter, the distance between the matter and all the stars and things are, in fact, getting wider. But it, it, it's only half expanding of its own volition. Uh, it's more, it's, it could be simply the effects of it traveling in and through itself like a weave without gaining or losing too much velocity. <laughs> and thereby... When it comes back, it's simply shot out at a greater speed, and it'll slowly over time get larger. Now, I don't know, this, this next part, I don't exactly uh, know how to uh, put, because I don't know the exact uh, laws or whatever on this. Um, but I'm going to go off of basically what I believe is true, not, not what I can prove is true, because I know... It's either a yes or no. And what I think I remember hearing is true. Something like that. Matter cannot be destroyed. Only recycled. Now this is the part, this next line, where I'm going to be talking out of my ass. Um, therefore, matter can't be created. It simply is there it simply one it simply is in one place or another you can't create molecules and atoms and you can't destroy them they simply go from one place to another are transferred so th th by this this more I, I guess supports what I'm saying with the uh, infinitesimal uh, universal expansion theory um When matter is pulled from one dimension, other matter that was previously in that dimension is pushed to our dimension. It is simply recycled. But in this case, it would mean, possibly, I don't know, again, theory, um, and not even a very good one, I imagine. Um, perhaps... There is matter in other dimensions. I don't know the 11 dimensions, but I do know time interacts with our own dimension. Meaning that somewhere, if this is true, there will be anomalies. Meaning uh, perhaps unexplained occurrences or happenings in parts of the universe or in the past or future. And I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but that opens a whole lot of questions like, if matter can exit to somewhere else in the universe, from the present, or the past, or the future, that, does that mean that the past, or the future, or the present, all... Uh, intersect and affect each other and I've heard a few theories about this and I've heard yes that it does affect the future and the past and the present all affect each other um I'm sorry I have to think more on this I may have a video here later but I'm literally again I came up with this theory like less than a half an hour ago well the circle thing I came up with about a week ago after couple minutes of thinking, um, but that's as far as I've gotten so far, uh, unfortunately, I don't know whether there's any science behind it, I don't know whether it's valid or even remotely valid, or, you know, I'm not, I can't say I know too much about science, I have just, you know, maybe a literal day or two worth of YouTube videos of science to go off of, that's, that's all I have, you know? piecing together what I can, and it probably isn't that valid. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later.